is given. All right, now it jumps to um, um, the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle one is 180 degrees. What is that? Linear pair postulate. One and four are a linear pair, so they are their sum is equal to 180. That is the linear pair postulate. In case you haven't noticed, that one comes up a good little bit. Okay, the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle five. The measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle five. Well, what's the relationship between one and five? What do we call this? Corresponding. Well, what did I just give you right before we started this proof? The corresponding angles assumption. There was a reason. Okay, then let's look at statement four. What do they do here in statement four? I mentioned a minute ago, usually when we get to this part of the proof, they start combining previous steps. So obviously step one's not going to do us any good. Let's look at two and three. What can we do with statements two and three to end up with the result of statement four? What's the only difference between statement two and statement four? Five and one. Five and one. Well, what did statement three say? One is equal to five. One is equal to five. So what did we do? Substitution. Substitution. Okay, substitution. And then angles four and angles five are supplementary. Uh, let me scroll up. Let me check that name. Uh, um, four and five add to one eighty, so it's kind of like our linear pair postulate, and then combining with the. Well, we'll just say the definition of supplementary angles. That's what we need to put there. The definition of supplementary angles. This is something you need to know. When you see the phrasing, if and only if, that means that your statement can go either direction. Okay? You can split this up into two statements. You can say that uh, two lines are parallel if corresponding angles have equal measure. And you can turn it around. You can say that if corresponding angles have equal measure, then your two lines are parallel. It's kind of that whole converse, inverse, contrapositive uh, statement kind of thing. Um, and if you have an if and only if statement, that means that all those statements, the conditional, the converse, the inverse, the contrapositive, all those statements are true if you can phrase it as an if and only if. So it doesn't matter which order you do it in. It doesn't matter which parts have the negatives. Uh, they're always true. Um, so, let's see here. The question is, is it reasonable to ask if there are other relations between two angles formed by a line intersecting two other lines that would allow you to conclude that the two lines are parallel? So, is the only thing that we can use corresponding angles, or can we talk about other angles as well? So, we have this diagram. Now, clearly, the way that this is drawn these are not parallel lines, right? Okay, L and M are not parallel lines. Um, but um, we're going to 
We're going to look at some uh, assumptions here because a lot of times, back when mathematicians were trying to prove statements, one of the ways that they would prove statements is they would assume that something was not true and essentially prove that assumption incorrect. If that makes sense. They would assume that it wasn't true and then they would go through a series of steps that would prove that that was incorrect. So then they could say that it was true. So anyways, question A. What condition on a pair of alternate interior angles would guarantee that line uh, L is parallel to line M? So alternate interior. Uh, somebody give me a pair of alternate interior for this diagram. Which angles are alternate interior? Mm -hmm. Five and three. Okay. So they say write your conjecture in if-then form. So you should say um, if angle three and angle five, what do we know about alternate interior angles? They're the same. They're congruent. If angle three and angle five are congruent, then line L is parallel to line M. Statement B. What condition on a pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal would guarantee that line M is parallel to line L? Write your conjecture and if then form. So uh, somebody give me a pair of same side interior. Four and five. Okay. So in if then form, that statement would be if angle four and angle five are what's true about same side. Are they congruent or are they supplementary? Yeah. Supplementary, okay. Same side are supplementary. That's a good way, same side supplementary, three S's together. That's a good way to remember that. If they are supplementary, then lines L and M are parallel, which is a different way of phrasing that. It's slightly different than the first one. Now C says what condition on a pair of exterior angles would guarantee that line L is parallel to line M. Now we have several different options here. So um, let's go with angle one. And what other angle do y'all want to use? Seven or eight? Seven. So one and seven, what are they? They are alternate exterior. And alternate exterior are congruent or supplementary? Congruent. So if angle 1 and angle 7 are congruent, then lines L and M are parallel. Okay, let's see if we can prove part B. See if we can prove that if angles 4 and angles 5 are supplementary, then lines L and M are parallel. Yep, we're going to end up using the linear pair postulate somewhere in there. Okay, but 
we're going to have to use the linear pair postulate. We're also going to have to use our corresponding angles assumption, right? So um, the if is going to become our given. Okay, the if here is going to become our given. We're going to start with angles 4 and 5 are supplementary. And we're going to see if we can get from that statement to saying that those lines are parallel. So here we go. One more proof. I know y'all are super bored, but hang with me. Please stop worrying about the people across the room. All right, so um, we're going to start with angle 4 and angle 5 are supplementary. That's going to be our given. So we're trying to prove that if this is our assumption, angle 4 and angle 5 are supplementary, can we get to saying that L and M are parallel? So I'm going to start with uh, Mallory mentioned it, the linear pair postulate, so I can go either way. I can go, I can do a linear pair with angle 4, or I can do a linear pair with angle 5. Which one would y'all prefer to do? Anybody, doesn't matter, 4. Okay, so um, angle 1 and angle 4 are a linear pair. Therefore, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 4 is 180. That is our linear pair postulate. Now, I've somehow got to involve angle 5 in this. Well, does angle 5 have a connection with angle 1? They're congruent. Why are they congruent? They're corresponding angles. Okay, so let's go with that. The measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 5 because of our corresponding angles. Angles assumption. In there. Okay, so how about we do a little substitution here? Um, the measure of angle five plus the measure of angle four. Oh, wait, hang on. Now, what am I trying to prove? Oh, no, we're done. We're done. We're done. Because corresponding angles, if we have corresponding angles, then we have parallel lines. I was trying to do too much. Okay? Um, one and five are corresponding angles. So, I feel like I'm missing a step, but we're going to go with it. Um, what did our parallel lines postulate say? Corresponding angles have equal measure, so I think I am missing, I need to put something else in here. What am I missing? Well, we'll just say L is parallel to M. And the reason is the parallel lines. Postulate. 